Okay, so now we're gonna move on to this artboard, which is at a uh, 9 16 ratio, which is sort of, you know, that's the long uh, image format for like smartphones or what have you, social media posts. Um, you know, we've got the square and then we've got the rectangle, which is the 9 16 ratio. Um, all right, so what we're going to do here with this one is we're going to bring in our giraffe image and we're going to mix that giraffe image in with these vector images. And then we are going to uh, create some more graphic images down here with text. So uh, you can drag and drop an image. So you could um, pull an image from like your desktop and you can drop it into Illustrator if you like, but there's actually a little bit better way to do that. And what that is, is you're actually going to go to file and you're going to go down about halfway and there's place. And a quick key for this, of course, is shift commander control P. So we're going to go ahead and choose place. It's going to say, okay, cool. Like, what do you want to place? If we go to our final folder, we are going to grab the giraffe final PNG file, and we're going to hit place. And the reason that place is so cool is because you can drag and drop the area where you want the giraffe image to go. And then it's relatively the size that you want it as you're pulling it into Illustrator. So uh, if I were to just bring this in and drag it into Illustrator, it again, it would be fine, but it would probably be gigantic. And it's going to take time for me to size that down and all that stuff. So, okay. So I've got my graphics underneath and I'm going to back out a little bit here so I can see what's going on. I'm going to have the giraffe hanging off to the side here. And I kind of want this little graphic sort of prevalent in the background. So I'm going to let that kind of show through and let's see here I think what I want is for a few of these little graphics to kind of pop up in front of the giraffe to kind of give it a little bit of uh, kind of a strange and cool sort of space with the giraffe so what I'm gonna do is in my groups here in my layers panel I'm gonna see here is the second artboard. So if I select that, those all my graphics there. If I toggle that down, I'm going to see the graphics are organized here like so. And then we've got the background uh, image, which is not currently covering the artboard completely. So let's go ahead and fix that. So I could just move it over with my arrow key like this. You could also just grab the side and pull it over. It's okay if it overlaps a little bit. Like I said, it's usually just a little bit safer if it does. All right. <clears throat> and so what I want to do is I want to toggle this group down. And it looks like it's grouped twice. So I am going to... So see how it's nested in itself and then it's nested in itself again? That's really unnecessary. It's kind of like a double duty <laughs> of grouping. So click and choose the second uh, one down. And we're just going to say ungroup. And then that's just going to give us one nesting doll of uh, grouped graphics here. So the next thing that I am going to do is I want the giraffe actually in this group, but I want it to be sitting on top of all these graphics. And then I just have a few that I want to pull above. So what I can do is with this group open, I can take my giraffe layer right here and I can just pull it down to the top of this group. Now, let's see, I want to bring a couple of the graphics up above the giraffe and I'm not sure which ones I want that to be. So I'm gonna grab my direct selection tool to find them. And for now, I'm going to go ahead and lock my giraffe layer because anytime I try to select anything, it's just going to get in the way because it's so big. So let's go ahead and lock this layer. 
with my direct selection tool, I'm going to select this dot um, because I want it to come to the front. And I see it's selected in the layers panel here. So I'm just going to click that layer. Let's see, is this locking the entire... the entire group something is going on oh there we go it must have been because my layers panel was a little smaller and my mouse is so big so um, you could go ahead and leave that giraffe layer locked I was just thought something was going on so I unlocked it for a moment but now I have this graphic drug up above the giraffe's ear I'm going to do the same thing with, let's say, like the star graphic. I think it'd be kind of cool if this overlapped over the giraffe's head. So with my direct selection tool selected, I can single this out and figure out where it is in my group here. And I see that it's right here. So I'm going to just select this layer and I'm going to drag it up above the giraffe. And now what I have is a little bit of fun with part of these graphics sort of overlapping with the giraffe's head. And that makes it, you know, um, a little bit of push and pull with depth of space and, you know, hopefully just makes it a little bit more visually interesting. So you can go ahead and unlock the giraffe. We're going to toggle this up and you can see that this is all in one neat and nice group. Uh, when I export this out of Illustrator, it's still going to only export what uh, is on the artboard itself, but you can see that things are kind of hanging off and it might be hard to sort of visualize what this is going to look like when it gets finally exported. So that's fine. Um, let's go ahead and add some graphics on top really quick though. And uh, then we will go ahead and and use a mask to mask off everything that is uh, leaking off of the artboard onto the side so that we can really see how this composition is looking. But first, we're going to go ahead and just click the rectangle tool here and let's just create a nice rectangle here at the bottom. Again, it can kind of bleed off of the artboard a little bit. So you don't have to like zoom in and get super exact. I'm going to go ahead and hit I for my eyedropper tool. And I want this box to be orange, just like from these graphics. And again, in terms of color today, we're just dealing things with things quickly. We're not going in and making swatches, pulling from a library. We're just kind of pulling from graphics that already exist in a file, which can be kind of helpful if you are in a hurry. All right, so I am going to say hello. This is going to be much smaller. And this time I want to use two different fonts in my artwork because sometimes using a mixture of a couple different fonts can be really fun and um, it can bring emphasis or de-emphasize or give, you know, just visual characteristics to certain um, words that you're using in a phrase. So here I have hello. Uh, I want to change the color here. Um, so I, because I'm in the text tool, I can't just hit my V key. It's kind of annoying, but it's just one of those little things to get the direct selection tool. So when you're in text mode, you need to come all the way up to the top of your toolkit. Go ahead and choose your uh, selection tool. And actually, I apologize, what we need is the eyedropper. So, um, no, you okay, I apologize. We need our selection tool. So go ahead and select the word hello. Make sure that it's selected. We're gonna hit I for the eyedropper tool and change that text from black to this sort of deep purple color that we have going on. And then I am going to go ahead and make another text layer here. 
And it's getting a little bit weird, so I think I'm just going to make it off to the side because it's a little bit easier to see it and deal with it, and then I'll just move it onto the board once I have the text complete. Okay, so for this, I want to choose more of a scripted font. If you go into your fonts menu, there's a filter here for the different types of fonts. I know that I want a scripted font. I'm going to go ahead and click the script font filter so that I can kind of come to a conclusion a little bit faster. And I'm just going to choose this one. That's fine. Go ahead and make this text a little bit bigger so that it stretches across the bottom. That's probably going to work just fine. Now I'm in text mode, so I want to choose my direct selection tool. Make sure that this is selected here. If it's not, just click on it. We're going to go to eyedropper, and I'm going to have this be this pink color. Let's see if that's enough, enough contrast to really read it. And it is. So I'm going to place that here. Maybe drag this down a little bit. Okay. All right, cool. So now I've mixed in my PNG file. I've got uh, the, the giraffe file. I've got uh, it intertwined with a group of graphics. And then I have my text and, and um, focal point. Well, the giraffe is the focal point, but then the eyes come down to the bottom of the composition for the message from our giraffe friend here, which says, hello, beautiful. So now I want to group this all together and I want to see what it's going to look like as a composition sitting on this artboard. So what I want you to do, and you can see here that we have help, we have the giraffe group here uh, with the background and then we have rectangle and hello beautiful which are graphics that we've added that are kind of just floating and they're not grouped together. So we're just going to marquee select the whole artboard. You're going to see that it selects this group and these top three items. You're going to go to Object and Group or Command or Control G, which you should be pretty used to by now. I'm going to group those together. Now they're all in one bucket together, which is perfect. Now we're going to create a mask for this. And um, this is uh, an extremely useful tool, and you'll use it a lot uh, in Illustrator. It's really, really good to know. So we're going to come over to the rectangle tool here and we are going to create a rectangle that sits right over this artboard. So let me just zoom in a little bit here. I'm going to kind of hover over the corner here and just drag that like so, and then we're going to go in and make some adjustments and just make sure that it's really sitting on the line of the artboard. Just really zoom in so you can see what's going on here. So we just want to make sure that's lining up really nicely. Okay. It's a little confusing because our bottom graphic is orange as well, but that's okay. All right, so now we have this nice rectangle sitting here. Now it's not going to stay orange. It's going to turn into a mask, which is, you know, basically the same thing as the masks we were working with in Photoshop to get our imagery cut out with uh, transparency with the PNG files. All right, so. Now pay attention to the order of this. So we've got our group here that's sitting on the artboard and we have a rectangle that's sitting on top. So what I want you to do in your layers panel here is select the group. Underneath, you are going to shift select the rectangle on top. We are going to go to object. We're going to go down to clipping mask and make. This quick key is control or command 
seven, and you will probably use this so much that you're gonna memorize it pretty quickly. So go ahead and click on Make, and what you're gonna see happening here, and you'll see that this is, becomes a clip group, but if we toggle this down, we've got the rectangle sitting on top, and it's masking everything else underneath it, which is incredibly useful. Now we can really see how this composition is looking without everything hanging off of the edges.